Um, so this is, can I just give me a thumbs up or something if I'm doing good? Not seeing any thumbs up. I see it. Am I on? Is this thing on? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I see it. OK. Um, so this is a, a short history of Naira. Um, you know, obviously the organization has been around since 1998, uh, which is kind of uh, humbling and shocking to think about. Um, the organization has actually been around longer than um, the majority of our board and executive staff have been alive, um, which is pretty awesome. Also, um, on both fronts. Um, so we will. Uh, your presenters today are uh, myself, uh, longtime board member, executive director, um, Katrina Moncure, uh, also longtime board member, uh, secretary, um, pull up the uh, our bios. Um, you know, uh, Katrina uh, uh, was founder of the 16 to vote on the 16th Twitter campaign. Uh, she currently runs the I support youth rights page on Facebook and uh, currently works in pharmaceutical sample management. Uh, Keith Mandel um, you know, is an attorney with a practice in insurance coverage. He's been involved in the youth rights movement for over 20 years and was an organizer for Youth Speaks campaign to lower the voting age, going all the way back to 1998, I believe, maybe earlier. Um, he has research written and spoken on efforts to lower the voting age. Um, Stefan Muller, uh, former uh, board member and president of Naira. Um, he's been a Naira member for uh, about 20 years and helped lead a successful fight against a local curfew law. Uh, he's currently an assistant professor of computer science at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Um, okay. And uh, a little bit about Naira's formation. Um, we were even before we were founded, um, kind of youth rights supporters first came together on the internet um, in 1991 with the creation of a and uh, discussion list. A uh, couple of folks met each other, uh, specifically Matt Walkoff and Matt Herman, who in 1996 decided to start an organization to fight for youth rights. And they founded um, Americans for a society free from age restrictions as far. Unfortunately, it only took a couple of years for that organization to be um, somewhat co-opted um, by uh, folks who were either pedophiles or pedophile adjacent or, you know, had very strong feelings about um, abolishing the age of sexual consent um, and also kind of took the organization in a more radical direction. So uh, Matt Walkoff, Matt Herman um, joined together with Avi Hein, who had uh, founded Youth Speak, and Josh Gilbert, who had founded the Canadian Youth Rights Association to start the National Youth Rights Association, um, which was uh, founded with the idea of uh, fighting for youth rights in a very uh, pragmatic, um, politically savvy way. And uh, in 1999, I first got involved and became president thousand um, uh, first local chapter started at uh, American University um, it was kind of a, a coincidence uh, a happy one that uh, Avi who was the the president at the time and I were both incoming freshmen at American University um, oh uh, when Naira was founded um, Matt Walkoff and Matt Herman were both students at the University of Maryland um, Avi Hine was a high school student in Maryland, and uh, Josh Gilbert was a high school student in, I forget where, somewhere in uh, Ontario, Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, we had our first national television appearance um, in 2001. Uh, it's a picture of me talking about lowering the drinking age on CNN. Um, we had always joked that. Um, uh, I had I had really big bushy hair, uh, very curly hair in college, and um, in that summer of two thousand one, I uh, cut it off and bought my first suit, and like two weeks later, uh, CNN called. So 
uh, good time. I figure that was, uh, um, no, they, they heard, they heard the news. So decided to have me on. Um, I think this was around when I first uh, became 2002 involved. 2002 to 2003, uh, we're really focused on uh, age discrimination in business. Um, there were, this is something that I had done when I was in high school. Um, you know, there are different uh, businesses, you know, convenience stores and such that say, you know, no more than two students allowed inside at any one time. Um, and, uh, you know, very blatant age discrimination. And uh, I was able to put a stop to that in my hometown when I was in high school. And then uh, we kind of looked at that more nationally and uh, were able to stop dozens of ageist businesses from uh, discriminating against youth. And uh, you know, we had a chapter in uh, Washington, DC. And 10 years before Tacoma Park um, officially lowered its voting age, uh, we had started the first campaign to lower the voting age to Tacoma Park. And it was a petition campaign. Um, you know, to get uh, get it on the ballot, actually. And we didn't get enough signatures, um, but uh, we really spread awareness about the issue in the town. And uh, after the uh, it passed the city council, I was able to look through and see that uh, one of the uh, original sponsors of the, the legislation in Tacoma Park um, had signed our petition. So um, we definitely uh, we're, were in on this at the start. Um, certainly, uh, my fellow co-presenters, please uh, jump in at any point. This is our lovely collection of uh, logos. Um, you know, started off with a, a more patriotic theme, um, went to uh, the blue and yellow theme, um, and the affectionately called Flame Eagle. Um, other people may have less affectionate nicknames for it. We're thinking it made us look like we were a gas company. But, uh, <laughs> I never heard that one. Eight years and just. Uh, oh, go ahead, Katrina. Oh, it was just does a comment oh, and just part of just remembering like um, any any changes like there's always a whole back and forth and, in uh, arguments because that's just organizations. <laughs> oh, my computer was muted. That's why I couldn't hear you. Oh, Sorry. yeah, okay. um, yeah. I remember that first one. Uh, that was, brings me back. I remember how it, changed, how it changed over time. And I remember, right, there was kind of a little bit of a fight on that uh, 2010 uh, uh, logo. It just, but you know, we it seemed right at the time. I mean, I think uh, and after kind of having stuck with the same pattern for eight years, we wanted something new. And obviously there was another change in 2018. So, I mean, I think, uh, uh, I mean, I'm curious as to what everyone thinks is, is the best of the logos. Hmm. I think the new one is definitely the most uh, modern feeling. I mean, obviously. Um, yeah. Just looking like at the website too. Sorry. Yeah. I agree. Uh, despite my earlier comment, actually, I think that one with the eagle is probably my favorite. Hmm. Current one's okay. Um, okay, um, moving on. So 2004, we submitted a white paper. Um, I think Keith wrote that actually on uh, yeah. minor campaign donations to the FEC. Yeah, um, essentially what happened say, uh, that campaign Sorry. Uh, yeah, what happened with that was, you know, the, the McCain-Feingold Campaign Finance uh, Act of um, was passed, and it banned contributions from anyone under the age of 18. But then that, uh, that statute went up to the Supreme Court, and they struck down that portion of it. So that kind of opened up the opportunity for us to essentially submit a white paper, because the F FEC, was sub uh, the Federal Election Commission, was um, to, um, soliciting white papers because they weren't sure how exactly to handle contributions from minors. So our law firm, I was at a small law firm at the time, about five lawyers, and we took on that pro bono, and we uh, drafted, I drafted the white paper kind of to come up with sort of a suggestion in terms of how to handle things and, you know, say that, you know, minors have to be allowed to contribute, but how are we going to handle it as we get older? And, I, you know, we thought by the time someone was 14, you know, they clearly should be able to, it should be a sort of an irrebuttable presumption 
that they would be able to donate. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what, I don't think that the FEC exactly adopted our program, but uh, our um, suggestions exactly, but they kind of went along and in their final ruling or final rulemaking, uh, obviously allowed minors to contribute. And it was, so it was, a, it was kind of a big victory for us because we kind of had a little bit of influence and say in terms of what happened and the process by which, you know, young people can speak their mind through contributing to campaigns. Um, so we were real pleased with that. Yeah, I remember there was this whole uh, one time effort to collect lists of campaigns that were still uh, requiring donors to be over 18, even though they were no longer required to. Uh, that caused a lot of difficulty for me because you know, obviously I want to donate to candidates that match my political leanings, but uh, it, it always some, sort of caused some problems when those, uh, even when I was over 18, required you to be over 18. I just kind of always yep. felt frustrated, like, oh, come on, I want to give you money. Why, <laughs> right. why do you have to discriminate? They still do that today. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of them do. I, yeah, I it's, it's try not to look at that section uh, so I can have plausible deniability about, uh, about that. <laughs> Yeah, we, we started another campaign earlier this year, um, or maybe late last year, because um, pretty much all the presidential candidates this year um, required you to be 18, because um, they all used Act Blue, um, which that's kind of, and we had actually, um, the Yang campaign had reached out to us saying like, you know, this is, Act Blue is making us do this, um, you know, let's, let's, what can we do to stop it? Um, oh, so cool. we, we tried to organize against it, but it's... Uh, mm. It's difficult. Um, 2004, uh, kind of our, one of our most successful campaigns, Naira Berkeley. Um, they uh, had a campaign to lower the voting age and uh, Robert Reynolds, who's uh, back involved in us again, um, now he's in New York, um, working on starting a, uh, a node there. Um, he went to the polls and uh, you know, attempted to vote. They denied him because um, he was underage. And he, you know, as you can see in the picture, in the bottom left, um, you know, did a, a, a protest against it. Um, and they, they worked really hard in Berkeley and elsewhere. Um, they weren't able to get it passed in Berkeley, but they did succeed in passing a bill in the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, where San Francisco basically asked the state, like, we'd like to lower our voting age. We'd like the state to give us permission, um, you know, to, to make it legally allowable to lower the voting age, um, which you know, none of, none of the press today about San Francisco's voting age bill, um, you know, mentions that, but, uh, you know, that, that's something that we were able to get done um, 16 years ago. It takes these earlier campaigns to kind of lay the groundwork for what's going on now, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, long before it got, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, attention um, the, the issue has now, uh, Naira was there and, uh, you know, fighting in the trenches. Um, <laughs> To, to get this stuff started. Yeah, like with Tacoma Park, it's like uh, t 10 years, you know, sometimes it, these things take a while. And sometimes, sometimes yeah. things might, might just not be successful yet rather than just not successful, you know, that's how it goes. Right, right, and, and I know one of the things that we were working on, you know, at about that time, and my, one of my major areas was voting age. And we were, uh, we, I, you know, we had the idea for this operation register, we called it where we were encouraging, you know, young people to do exactly what uh, Robert did, go to the polling place, you know, ask to vote. To vote. And we also thought about like going to a registration office, asking to register and kind of, uh, you know, organizing what could, have, could be considered maybe sit-ins even, although it never really turned out exactly that way. Um, but that was kind of the goal. And obviously Berkeley was the most successful of those. And I, but obviously there were more later that I know we're going to talk about. Uh, well, the one that, that it's not on the timeline, but the, uh, the most successful, uh, depending on your perspective of that was, um, in Minnesota and gosh, I can't remember his name right now, but he, he went in the idea of the campaign he would go, you know, attempt to vote, they'd turn him away and he would, you know, Jesse protest Hunter. about that. Um, but they like Jesse Hunter, um, but they actually let him vote because they had the same that. day registration and he just, uh, you know, or whatever just went in and voted um and uh that was pretty awesome but then like they threatened to uh to sue him and to like prosecute him for uh, voter fraud 
Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we were able to get them, get them to drop the charges, but uh, that was a pretty exciting time that, you know, Naya, I remember, was able to vote illegally under the age of 18. Yeah, I remember the, um, um, the thing that first got me involved in Naira, actually, when I first heard about it was, uh, is I forget the, the year, actually, I meant to go look this up or have Alex look it up before. Um, it was somewhere around 2000 or so. Uh, there was a, a news story about how 16-year-olds um, were able to vote in Maryland's primary because of a weird quirk of how the election was a long time after the primary. And, you could vote if you'd be eligible to vote in the general election, you could vote in the primary. So 16 year olds were voting in Maryland and there was a big news story about this that quoted Naira. And I had been interested in youth rights for a while, but didn't know that there was actually an organization for this. And so I read this news article about it. So, oh, I, I should join. Yeah. I think those exact words- Yeah, I remember that. that so many of us. The, um... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, the, the primary was like, 18 months or 16 months before the general election. So um, that was, they had the law that if you're going to be 18 for the general election, you vote in the primary. And then the 16, I remember that the mayor of Baltimore had actually said, I think it was Sheila Dixon um, said that, you know, that she uh, supported lowering the voting age because of, you know, just the great feedback that she's had of, wow. of young voters from that primary season. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I, so this is my funniest anecdote about uh, joining Naira. So my anecdotes are going to go just go downhill from here. So I may as well use it. <laughs> uh, but I, I joined Naira and initially was was not very active. I think for a couple of years, uh, I was under the impression that this was a big national organization with you know hundreds of thousands of members, and uh, uh, obviously the leadership was very busy. Uh, so you know I could just be a sort of bystander, you know, just member. Uh, because it had to be. I mean, it was in the news. It had to be a big organization. But then, you know, one time I, I was, I had some question or thought or something uh, and uh, emailed the, the general Naira email about it and uh, got an email back from Alex, the executive director, very quickly. And that sort of shattered the illusion of like, this is a giant national organization with, uh... so, uh, sorry, Alex. Uh, the old, like, if he has time to answer me, he must not be that important. Either, exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, until then, I thought you were really important. <laughs> you just felt that. Yeah. 2004 was when I first joined, like, you know, March of 2004 was yeah. a Naira DC meeting. And I think it was kind of, kind of similar. We were, like, we were just in that library in Cleveland Park in DC. And I was, you know, and Alex was, they were like, wait, you're, wait, you're just, you're the president of this whole thing just right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no offense, that wasn't an insult. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I still consider my, uh, uh, he's, he's not here as far as I can tell, but uh, my, my proudest anecdote of that was uh, when Scott Davidson met Hal Levy. Oh, yeah. And uh, they, they both got to talking about uh, youth rights and Naira and Scott was involved in, in Naira pretty heavily at the time and uh you know Scott was talking about uh, uh was talking about me and, and Hal was like wait you know the Alex Crackney Palace <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, newspaper article referred to you that way once I think it was like a typo it's yeah in, he's just the Crackney Palace <laughs> referred to me that way the you don't remember this <laughs> maybe it was a big joke at the time. Um, well, maybe they just thought my last name was a law firm or something. I, don't mm. I mean, um, that's a fair assessment. But 2004 is also um, the year we started the Youth Rights Wiki, Youth Rights Network, and um, the Naira Forum, which was a uh, very substantial part of uh, the organization's culture for uh, a number of years. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. Katrina has uh, I was a lot moderating. to say about that. Yeah, I think the form actually was older than that, I think. I think it was just 2004 was when we switched to the V Bulletin format and oh, things kind of... That's true. Took off. Um, yeah, I think, and, things, and then things, and then everybody kind of joined and then like, you know, and then as, as forums do, the, you, I think, you, you, yeah, and Finn and I were made into moderators. So as things kind of grew and then... 
but yeah, it was, it was for, and I think post-2005 being kind of, it, it was a good year also for chapter activity. So we had kind of the increased online online engagement and, and like, uh, I see you're, you're going to get to the Vermont thing soon. Um, plus, yeah, plus Berkeley, yeah. plus, plus, there were other, there were others coming up. I mean, I mean, so many chapters, you know, spring, spring into being briefly and then go away. That's just how it goes. But, uh, yeah. but it was, a, it was a big year for all that. The Vermont campaign. So um, there was a, we were invited by a local member, um, a couple of local members actually uh, that started up uh, the Vermont chapter and uh, they decided to do a intensive two week campaign uh, was crossing the state, um, trying to lower the drinking age and um, uh, myself and a number of other um, NIRA members came up to uh, Vermont for two weeks. Um, stayed with uh, local member Hardy Mesha and uh, went to every college campus in the state and uh, were able to get a whole bunch of um, petition cards signed. Uh, we met with the governor, we, we were on, you know, talk great radio and papers all through the state um, and we ended up even getting an article in the New York Times um, out of it which was uh, the whole thing was very well done very impressive um, and, uh, it was, and it was great because we had like all the people you know on the forum all the members virtual members like they were supporting us you know while we were on the ground and it was just like really really nice and well executed. That was amazing. Hmm. Wish we'd be able to do something and like then, that again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then 2005, we also created the Student Bill of Rights. Um, we uh, collaborated with a number of other student-led uh, organizations, Students for Sensible Drug Policy and others. And we kind of wrote this on a wiki collaboratively, uh, Student Bill of Rights, which we still have up on the Nairo website. Oh no, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a good, it's a good Bill of Rights. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, the bill of rights. I was thinking the wiki itself. Uh, <laughs> oh no, the, the wiki's the is unfortunately gone, but um, but you can still see it through um, Internet Archive. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> Some stuff throughout our our history. And here, uh, speaking of history, here are uh, our previous versions of the website. Oh dear God, our I tried our slogan used to be the last civil rights movement. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of uh, a big. I remember the discussions about that one. God. Yeah. Yes. We, we, Pro tip: Don't ever call your movement that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, making predictions about the future is never a good idea. Although it, it always seems fine at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it was what probably two thousand. I mean, the people who were in charge of the organization probably at the time it was like, yeah, that was fine. But some of those things where it, it doesn't, I guess, no pun intended, doesn't age well. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I was about to use the same words. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, we had a, I remember throwing around a bunch of potential slogans. I think, did we have the members vote on them or was it just the board? The, we, we had the members vote on them. We mm -hmm. I think the members actually voted for the last civil rights movement twice. And then we finally held another vote and we didn't list that as an option. Um, yeah, I remember the one where we didn't list that as an option. Uh, yeah. And, Became what uh, live free, live free start. Young. Yeah, is that, I like that, is that one. still the slogan? Still the slogan. All right. Yeah, yeah, that was my choice then too. <laughs> I remember one of the options on that one was also be seen, be heard. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fine slogan doesn't say anything about youth rights. But... Right. Exactly. But obviously, a spoof of that annoying, you know, seen and not heard thing. Oh, okay. Oh, right. yeah, that's true. Ah. that's true. I, I think we have a um, a t-shirt design that's riffing off of that mm -hmm. um, once we launch our merchandise store, which is in progress. We're nice. close to nice. having that launched. Um, we used to have one, right? I mean, we had those the t-shirts yeah. that several people were wearing in the pictures in the last slide. I think I, I must still have mine somewhere. I know I had one of those. Okay. The merch stores were always touch and go because we we're always trying to find like I think software that worked. We used Cafe Press for a long time, then mm -hmm. we tried. I think we used something else, and then it stopped working, and then it was a whole thing. 
Well, and, and the other trouble was that, that uh, you know, the big, I don't remember what year it was, but I actually had a bunch of uh, uh, t-shirts screen printed and I like, I bought like 500 plain white t-shirts and got them screen printed with uh, slogans on them and then just like kept them in boxes in my basement for years and years and years and like would ship. Thankfully now technology has advanced and there is drop shipping. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing with the new merchandise store. Um, we're not going to be holding on to giant boxes mm. full of t-shirts and uh, you know, they can print on demand any size or style that uh, people want. So that look forward to that. That's good. And yeah, we have our old websites. <laughs> yeah. I definitely like the, uh, the orange and blue style better than the uh, green and yellow. The current website's really good though. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I was just looking at it and was impressed by that. Yeah. Nice. I mean, that, that redesigned one, I think it still ended, I think it ended up being, it was much nicer. I think it ended up being like, it was very rigid. I think I remember when just trying to, trying to customize anything. I'm just trying yeah. to go from memory here, but there were, mm -hmm. there were issues, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We had a lot of problems with the, yeah. right, the customizing, getting it to work and there were these glitches a lot when we switched to that 2011 web page. Yeah. And it, and it killed the forums, uh, but I'm not going to start that fight again. Continuing <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the high, uh, um, timeline, 2005 also, I finally started working full time for Naira uh, as executive director. And we got our first office, uh, which was very cool. And uh, 2007 to 8, you know, we had a big media campaign and speaking tour on the drinking age, participated in a number of debates um, around the country on uh, lowering the drinking age. Was when choose responsibility well. um, Yeah, so choose responsibility. Um, just, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, for those who don't know, that was a um, petition basically signed by college presidents um, calling to be lowered, saying that uh, the high drinking age uh, makes drinking more dangerous on their college campuses, um, and uh, it got a huge amount of attention. And um, you know that was just a really great opportunity to uh, be a part of that national dialogue about lowering drinking age. Uh, 2007, we uh, worked to stop. Uh, Washington DC succeeded stopping them from banning everyone under 21 from all music venues. Um, and then there were like additional bills kind of that came off of that regarding the curfew that we're able to also stop. Um, I mean, it has a curfew, but it was going to make it harsher. Um, we were able to stop that. Uh, Remember that hearing with the council about that that uh, year? Terrible. Jim Graham. Jim. <laughs> Like most of the way through it, you were about to speak. You and Scott were about to speak, and it was like when it was almost over, and most people left. That he that he was all like, "Oh, I didn't see you there." And like the parents of a girl who'd been murdered, he just called them up to speak, like right before you talked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then we had to follow that, which was just yeah. Uh, but you know, he got voted out because uh, he was corrupt. Um, and uh, another uh, another guy. I forget, Evans, I think, uh, also um, is facing corruption charges and see, he just... Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't think, I, so I remember my, this was my, um, in my signature on the forums for a while, the response I got from a um, New York City councilman from Staten Island, where I, I wrote uh, to him about his support of New York City's, uh, of a curfew for New York City, and got back a really rude response that I never thought you know, words would come out of a politician's mouth. Um, I think he's now Staten Island Borough President or something. So, uh, oh, no. so he didn't. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the, the Aegis get was coming to them. It doesn't always apply. Oh. He had died, but maybe I was thinking of someone else then. Um, 2007 also, uh, Washington Post did a front page article on us in the style section um profile of me and that's uh 
That's a picture of me in our office with our cool bump, bumper sticker laden uh, filing cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, you still have that? No, no. That's oh. unfortunately, uh, I don't know, at a dump somewhere, I guess. It's, I don't know. Was, was that the, uh, the feature that led to that Jezebel post? Yes, yes. it was. <laughs> I was like thinking about that. Oh, uh, that was fun. Yeah, they, they like stuff in a lot more than me. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, no, they said I was more of a looker than <laughs> which yes. is a testimonial I've, I've brought up about myself uh, <laughs> a couple times since then. But, Good. Um, but still just decided that they would go with you uh, <laughs> overall. Now, of course, the point was that they, uh, they were uh, riffing on me, saying there's something creepy uh, about uh, our organization and, you know, implying some... Um, sexual improprietary, but they were, uh, you know, uh, calling the underaged uh, uh, Stefan a, uh, a looker and complimenting sure, yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> the irony of that was not lost. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I'm 17. Was mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the middle picture there was uh, the, uh, the bong hits for Jesus case, uh, which is a uh, free speech case out of Alaska. More speech, Frederick. Court. More speech, thank you. Um, where, uh, you know, we joined the rally with uh, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. And uh, it was to their frustration um, because, you know, they really wanted to, to keep this professional and they told all of their supporters who they like flew in around the country, like, you know, no, you know, no beads and tie dye, you know, no, no hippie clothes, like, you know, be very presentable, you know, wear suits and, and dresses and all that. And, and it was the Naira, interns who were the ones that showed up in the, the camo jacket and mm -hmm. uh, they were the ones that got all the pictures because that's what the, the reporters wanted to cover so sorry guys um, <laughs> going for respectability is, is kind of always a losing battle <laughs> just one thing I've learned uh, here is a uh, bunch of headshots of the longest serving Naira board members um, you can see uh, me, Keith, Katrina, and Stefan are all in the top six. Um, and Neil is currently on the board. Um, he's uh, coming in there at number seven. There's Scott, Avi, um, who founded the organization. Uh, Rich, Jan, Connell, Christopher, Anne, Jalen. It's, it's a good group. Yep. <laughs> Gonna say I chose my picture because it was from when I graduated from college in 1994, and I figured, well, if I always use this picture, I'll never age. So I can always be a young, <laughs> a young person. Yeah, in the discussion last night, of uh, we were all trying to find pictures, more recent pictures of us. And uh, I said I could go look for a picture of myself from 1994, but it would look a little different. <laughs> I <look now. laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we always tease Keith about that picture that he used for... <laughs> His entire Naira career, basically. Oh, it's a classic, though. <laughs> but Keith, you're the you're the oldest one of us. <laughs> I know, I know, and I, you know, it's like we're getting there too. I mean, we're. I mean, Alex and I are, Alex and I are in our late thirties now. Yeah. Stephen, you said you're thirty now. I'm thirty so. now, yeah. That's, I'm old. Time marches all of us on, right? Yeah. No, Keith was always my great example, though. Whenever I would be arguing with somebody, and they'd say, "Oh, well, you'll feel differently when you're a parent," I would bring up Keith. Yes. Yeah. He was for a long time. He was our token Naira parent. <laughs> now I guess they're Alex more. I have two. three yeah. kids now, including yeah. a, what an eight-month-old baby, and I'm four, at forty-eight. So it's not like you're never too old. Yeah. yeah. So and now uh, Alex has two, right? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah, three and a half year old and a 13 month old. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely helpful because that's, that's something that we got a lot was like, oh, you'll feel different when you're older and you'll feel different when you have kids. And uh, it's always helpful to have uh, supportive parents and uh, you know uh, adult members who we can point to and um, say, no, no, we're still, we still strongly support the rights of young people even though you know, we're, we're over the hill. Exactly. Of course. There's always, they always find reasons like Alex, I'm sure probably someone would probably say to you now, Oh, wait till you, wait till your daughters are older. Mm -hmm. And then like, and then they'll find some other reason later, or it's, it's always something. Exactly. <laughs> There's always something. Um, but the, the more, the more, um, 
you know, arguments we can take away from them, the better, I, I think. Okay, back to the timeline, 2008, Naira Southeast Florida Forum. That's when uh, Jeff Nadell, who you can see um, there on the board, uh, first got involved. He was a, a longtime president of the organization, uh, just a fantastic public speaker and organizer. Um, you know, they, they ran uh, very successful, um, I mean, campaigns to, against their curfew law, against, uh, you know, to lower the voting age and, and else other other things, student rights things in, in Florida. Um, and uh, we raised money to put an ad on television during the Daily Show and Colbert Report in the Washington DC market. Um, it was a uh, lowering the voting age commercial actually um, written and designed by um, Naira Southeast Florida. It was uh, still on our YouTube channel, still I think probably our most viewed video. Um, it's good stuff. When I was running 16 to vote on the 16th, it was like two or three times during the day at least I was, you know, pushing that one out. Oh, yeah. yeah. The great thing about that ad is, you know, since there's no date on it. You could run it today. I mean, you could oh, just yeah. you know, plop it out there. You yeah, know? I haven't watched that in a while. Oh, it's, it's good. It's Does it still hold up in terms of production values? That's always the, the, the danger. I think it's pretty good. I think so. I mean, it's pretty professionally done. All right, we could run it again. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, raising the money for that, though. We you know, put out all of these fundraising campaigns and tried to get tons of money. And in the end, we were able to run two 30-second spots uh, on one channel in just the DC area. <laughs> I remember being discouraged. Like, wow, ads are expensive. <laughs> yes. I think, it, I think we got charged more because I think it, because it was right, it was leading up up to the 2008 presidential election. Mm -hmm. And I think it got pegged as a, as a political ad, even though it was clearly not going mm. for any particular candidate or anything. And I yep. think that raised the price. Uh, yeah. So. yeah, I remember I was at a, um, I think when that was going on, I, I think there was there was this conference, I think being held by Mobilize at the time. Do you remember this, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, I think you were busy and I got sent, I got sent to go try to like, try to like get some grant money for, for this exact project. And then, I, and then it was sort of, it was, it was kind of up against like three, like three other groups and kind of, I was like there by myself. The others had like several like college age people. I was, you know, like 25 and by myself and <laughs> and just trying to like kind of kind of put, and like, and like throughout the day, it's like people were like, oh yeah, that sounds like a neat idea. And then got to the final judging and they're just like, this idea is ridiculous. You don't want to have better, better, you know, better data for this. And then I think I was told afterwards, like, I think like someone was telling me like the, all the other projects aren't things that you have to convince people in the first place is a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's just getting people to care, mm -hmm. which I guess we of course know very well. It's like, yeah, there's, there, so we have those two steps, the whole, you know, get someone on board with that as a good idea in the first place and then get anyone to care enough to do anything about it. Yeah. That and is it always led to that whole, it led to that whole, like, I think campaign where we were trying to get, where we had those cameras, we were trying to get videos of people like, about lowering the voting age. That's yeah, right. and those videos are still up on our YouTube channel as well. So feel free to yeah. watch some testimonials from 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, There's some that should probably come down, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> if I remember some of them, but I haven't looked in a while. Um, it's also anyway. the time that we uh, got really active, that there's a, a bill introduced in Congress to uh, finally regulate behavior modification camps, troubled teen camps, residential treatment centers, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, abusive um, behavior control for teens. And uh, we participated in uh, uh, collecting testimony and being at a hearing and lobbying, and uh, we were able to get it passed through Congress. Um, unfortunately, it uh, didn't get passed through the Senate, but um, you know, there were hearings and there were reports, GAO reports, official reports. Um, it was a, it was a really good moment, um, for the, for the movement. And then two years later, um, we had, uh, we actually had the, uh, Dave Moss, who was our development director, um, was, uh, neighbors with Jenny Harkin, who was the daughter of Senator Harkin. Um, who happened to be chair of the um, the Senate Health Committee, I think, um, and we were able to put her on our board and uh, get the the bill um, 
get Senator Harkin involved and had hearings in the Senate on uh, regulating behavior modification camps. Um, but, you know, still didn't uh, pass overall, but still just a whole lot of really, really promising work that we were able to do um, and, and make happen um, back then nationally on this. And uh, we also joined a uh, amicus brief um, in uh, Safford v. Redding Supreme Court case. Um, that was the case of a, um, a girl in Arizona, I think, who was strip searched yeah. because they thought she had aspirin. <gasps> um, and uh, they, they actually strip searched her in school, um, just a shocking abuse of, of uh, rights and power. And uh, we joined in a brief, went to the Supreme Court. Uh, thankfully, the court ruled with us and uh, you know, ruled against strip searches. In what? I said, I said seven to, yeah, we won seven to two. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty clear cut case. Yeah. Here's a couple of uh, shots of us on TV. Woohoo. Um, uh, so that's Jeff Nadell on um, uh, CNN headline news uh, talking about parents should not spy on their kids. Um, that's a, uh, a video, a picture of me on uh, ABC that I was, actually was in Times Square on the big um, jumbotron in Times Square, which is pretty awesome. We had uh, Jason Kendi uh, go down and stand in Times Square to get those uh, pictures. It's pretty neat. Um, and uh, that's Brad White on Fox News, um, which is actually uh that tv appearance is what caused me to get my first cell phone um because i was uh working a part-time job at uh auto parts store at the time and didn't have a phone and cnn or fox news called and wanted uh, somebody on right away to talk about whatever issue that was and they couldn't get in touch with me um but uh, somehow they were able to like look through an old press release mm -hmm. from like you know years earlier and uh, Brad White's name was on it. And uh, they got in touch with Brad. And even though Brad wasn't involved with us, you know, um, at the time, he was like, all right, you know, <laughs> nobody else is around, I'll, I'll do it. So uh, he, did, he did a pretty good job. And I was like, all right, I need to be accessible. I'm gonna get a cell phone. Um, and then on uh, the bottom right was uh, Messiah Imes who was on Al Jazeera, because um, he was a uh, leader of our Naira um, chapter in uh, working on lowering the voting age in Jersey City, um, New Jersey. That one's more recent, I think, right? Yeah, that one was 2015 or 2016, yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah, the others, the others are ancient, but... <laughs> yeah. Except for Jeff, that was 2012, I think. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he was on like twice um, about two similar issues, I remember, mm -hmm. and that was one of them. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff was just, oh, he was so good. Oh, yeah. Such a good speaker, so good on TV. Um, uh, 2010, we joined another amicus brief. Um, in this case, it was Brown v versus EMA, uh, originally Schwarzenegger versus EMA, which was uh, a law in California that banned uh, violent video games to young people. And, uh, you know, we were very heavily, like in the, the Savannah Redding case, we just kind of put our name on something, but in the, um, the Brown versus EMA case, like we were very heavily involved. We joined, we partnered with the ACLU on that one. And, uh, you know, we pretty much guided that whole amicus brief, which is kind of shocking that, you know, a bunch of uh, teenagers with no legal um, training were ones that the, the ACLU, the freaking ACLU were taking uh, directions from. Um, and we started, um, basically, you know, we, we figured that it would hinge on the idea that, you know, political speech is uh, held to a higher scrutiny in the court than uh, other kinds of speech. So we wanted to make the case that um, video games may be violent, but they both might also have little content um, that uh, should not be censored to anybody of any age. And uh, we actually were able to crowdsource 
some responses uh, among uh, young gamers. We reached out to a number of gaming sites and uh, got people to contribute their uh, examples of um, you know video games that had political content, and uh, a lot of those we were able to put right into the brief. Um, and uh, so it was it was you know, young was people. Amazing young people speaking directly to the court, you know, in their quotes. Um, and uh, it just kind of really, you know, it's one of my favorite examples of our work with Naira is, you know, it's not just um, having young people's voices um, included and heard and speaking out on things. It's not just like a touchy feely, it's good to include people, but like, there are lots of issues where they know more, they know their lives, they know kind of their experiences. And uh, the ACLU people, you know, knew the law, but they didn't know anything about video games. Um, so young people were the experts and, uh, you know, young people were, were really able to make that brief um, a lot stronger. And uh, I was always also very excited that in the, um, the opinion, uh, which is written by Justice Scalia, um, he seemed to put a uh, shout out in there specifically to Naira um, because, um, you know, he's, he's been quoted at times saying that, you know, he always reads the ACLU brief and uh, in his decision, he said that like, you know, we can't require young people to get parents permissions to be involved in politics because, you know, imagine if there's a uh, youth led civil rights organization fighting for young people to not be, you know, you know, corporal punished, you know, how, how are they going to, how are you going to expect young people to then get their parents permission to rally against corporal punishment? Um, which was like, he must've read the brief. He must've gone to investigate our website and like put a shout out to us in, in a Supreme court decision, which is extremely exciting. Yeah. That was a great opinion too. I mean, there aren't a whole lot of, uh, I'll, reveal my political opinions here, but there aren't a whole lot of uh, Scalia opinions that I agree with, but um, the experience of reading a Scalia opinion that you agree with is is fantastic because he, he doesn't uh, pull any punches. Yes. Yeah, when that went eight to one and, and surprising to no one, the one dissenter was Clarence Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Dara Scalia had an absolute like scathing reply to like to Clarence Thomas's dissent because dissent like, he, he, he like doesn't think young people are Clarence Thomas doesn't think young people are people. Uh, he was also one of the dissenters in, in Safford v. Redding. Hmm. Um, Didn't we give him uh, the Ageist of the Year Award that year? Yes. Oh, I Maybe. remember that award. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, that was... And of course, our, our, our rally on, on midterm election day in 2010. Yes. It was a very cold morning. And we, <laughs> we, um, we were there with the... I think some of the people with the... Some of the some of the some ECA people who were kind of also on this uh, who were also who were also on this case and we were like I think people walking by who just saw us they're like hey I want to join in and they were just wanting they're holding our signs yeah the one with the Statue of Liberty saying how many lives does she have left yeah and uh, and Uzi of course giving that speech mm -hmm. that we still have in the on our YouTube channel yeah which I'm the one who held the camera and of course I'm sorry I start I started it maybe a paragraph into her speech and the camera was very shaky. <laughs> well, I'm glad was, we got it. It was a really good picture of it on the bottom left there. Yeah. You holding the chart. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like a, a meme we found online about like, you know, crime, crime victims, you know, per hundred thousand, like going down. And then like, you know, we had like doom and Wolfenstein, like all these, you know, super violent video games, you know, as, came out at the same time that crime was dropping. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just... one where, I th yeah, I think it was like, been playing GTA since 2004, still haven't stolen a car. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then since, since the, uh, the oral argument was on election day, we, uh, you know, made it a little bit of a combined uh, voting age and, um, you know, video game censorship rally since that's uh, had been a naira tradition going back to our founding of having rallies on election day every every election day to speak out about lowering the voting aid yeah i it was earlier that year i'd started 16 to vote on the 16th on twitter and I th and it was a little difficult because i was at the rally 
but uh, but I think I was also trying to like no obviously not the 16th of the month I was also trying to do 16 to vote on election day to kind mm -hmm. of sort of be our online version of doing that yeah um, 27 we also stopped the mosquito device in Washington DC um, there was uh, just this bizarre and inhumane um, device that is still exists in uh, Philadelphia and elsewhere where it emits a high-pitched scream that only um, people under a certain age um, their ears are uh, set up such that they can hear it and it just basically drives young people away like pests um, this kind of sonic warfare um, that was deployed deployed at the gallery station gallery place station a very busy metro stop in DC uh, to drive away young people and uh, we filed a complaint with the Human Rights Department and uh, got that uh, taken down, um, got some press about it and still people, you know, uh, we just got a call a month or two ago from a newspaper in uh, Philly, I think, um, covering the devices in Philadelphia and asking for our opinion on uh, you know, what can be done to stop them. Um, and then we also held successful uh, campaigns in 2011 to stop a curfew from being implemented in Montgomery County, Maryland, and in um, uh, San Juan Capistrano, California. Yeah, we had that. Uh, we had a couple of hearings on the curfew that we went to. It was like the one in July, and then another one like the following November when they were trying to kind of revive it until mm -hmm. it kind of eventually got tabled and then forgotten about. Yes. I remember getting in an argument with Mark Elrich, who's now our county executive. Elrich. <laughs> uh, do, do you have on the timeline um, a spot for the, the lawsuit that we filed on the curfew that the Southeast Florida chapter filed in? I'm trying to remember, recall the year. Um, it was, it was, it before was sometime then. around this period. What? Oh, so that was definitely before then because I was thinking about my argument with Mark Gelrich, and I think I brought that up. I'm mm. like, we're suing, we're, we're suing West Palm Beach about this. We'll sue you too if you don't drop this. <laughs> right. Mm. That was a big deal because that was like the first lawsuit, you know, that had been filed with Naira's name, on, you know, on, in the caption. Um, and I was trying to recall exactly how that ended up getting, you know, resolved or settled or, or whatever. I don't know what ever happened to that, actually. I don't remember what happened to that either. I felt like the problem was like anyone they, like Jeff and then anyone else who was on it kept kept turning 18. Mm -hmm. and that's that somehow like voided the whole thing and there was a lot of technicalities. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. Well, the case is moot now because we've been delaying it for uh, two years and now you're not uh, <laughs> under 18 anymore. Yeah. It's a, it's a very... Um, a very real uh, example of the quote, uh, justice deferred is justice denied. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, here's some pictures of some local Naira chapters. Um, bottom left, you know, we've, again, that's Jeff's chapter in Southeast Florida. Um, for a lower voting age. Um, the uh, bottom right was Naira Patterson. Um, which actually had a Naira van, which is just so cool. <laughs> cool, yeah. Uh, top right is Naira Berkeley. Um, by, Chris's hair. <laughs> yes. By, by virtue of, um, you know, them being in Berkeley, I suppose they were definitely the, the coolest Naira chapter, I think. Um, and then the upper left is uh, the Zionsville Student Rights Union. And they, they had a number of successes. They were kind of an early um, advocate for um, shifting start time for high school, uh, pushing that back. And uh, I think they had some success. I think they actually succeeded in um, delaying the start of high school by 45 minutes or an hour or so, just because, uh, you know, the teen's circadian rhythm is such that uh, they are more naturally um, sleep in, you know, later. And uh, asking them to go to school at 7 a.m. is just, uh, you know, one more inhumane uh, demand uh, that we make. Alex, Alex, I'm just going to I'm just remind you about the time. It's like it's 12.01 um, Eastern right now. Um, so mm -hmm. maybe like wrap up um, soon.
Yep, I think we've got like two or three more slides. So we are pretty good. And we started a little bit late, so. Um, so I think this is the last uh, one in the timeline. Um, so 2013, Naira helps lower the voting age to 16 in Tacoma Park, Maryland. Uh, 2014, uh, we actually spurred the San Francisco Youth Commission to begin the Vote 16 campaign. Um, again, nobody talks about this, but I think um, Bill, um, who was our executive director at the time, and um, Mike Mails had written letters to uh, youth commissions in various cities asking them to uh, take on the issue of lowering the voting age. And uh, they sent one to San Francisco Youth Commission and they like, you know, took it up right away. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how this started because, um, uh, you know, Naira sent them a letter. I was... I was there when Tacoma Park voted to lower the voting. voting. <laughs> yeah, well, there were, yeah, there were the three. There were three hearings: the, the, the initial reading, and then the first reading, and the second reading. Yep. It just it was it was it was just so cool, kind of like for that second reading, the final vote setting in stone, just kind of, kind of being there in the room. I think it was me and Bill Bestricky were the only people from Naira there, oh. and like it was just kind of like saw it happen. I was I was like so excited. I ran up to each council member and went like shaking their hands. You know, pre-COVID when that was a thing people did, um, yeah. and, like, and it was like, and I was like, yeah, I was like, you were awesome. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> it's just, it was amazing. Yeah, Naira spoke at the hearings and and uh, you know tried to you know talk to people and so yeah, we were we've been part of this you know since the beginning and uh, you know we we made it happen. So um, kind of. Kind of bittersweet, and that ex that ex it was May thirteenth, twenty thirteen, and that exact same day, uh, Hardy Misha, who was on our board at the time, oh. passed away from lymphoma, yeah. like that morning. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of yes, yeah. kind of bittersweet. So it was like it was like the celebration thing, but also also kind of, and then being sad about the other thing. It was kind of yeah, things have things have to get yeah. complicated, I guess, because that's life. Yeah, and yeah, if that was May thirteenth, then my you know, my mom died like three days before that. Yeah. Um, and she was also a Naira member, so it was another sure. one. Someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, of course, you know, more importantly, your mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, again, 2015, you know, Naira uh, you know, worked to uh, lower the voting age in Hyattsville, Maryland, um, where I live now, and uh, it was the second city in the country to lower the voting age to 16. You lived in both places. Did you have a you were in Tacoma Park and you moved to Hyattsville? I, I, I did live in Tacoma Park and now I live in Hyattsville. Yeah. So uh, we, we joke that. Keep moving. Hmm? Alex just needs to keep moving yes. around the country. You have a place in Greenbelt yet? <laughs> Not yet. That's that's next. Or maybe maybe San Francisco next. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, I think DC was trying to, but I think that got stalled. Yeah, it did. It was. We had people who had promised that they were going to vote for it, and then they like changed their vote at the last minute and uh, oh. screwed us over. Mayor of Chicago a... said she was for a voting age of sixteen, so maybe Chicago can be after San Francisco. All right, I live in Chicago now too. That's right. Yeah. Can, All right. Uh, we got two people like, here. Wasn't Lowell, Massachusetts, supposed to be the first one at one point because we had the group there that was working on that and then yeah I, um i actually went to the there was a hearing for because they had to petition i think for home rule so that there was actually hearing at um the state level to allow lowell to consider that um and i went there i went to the state house for that hearing um along with lucy um yeah. i didn't do much but i was there <laughs> because i mean there were enough awesome uh naira and um people from lowell there that I, you know, I didn't have to do anything. They were just. <laughs> and then uh, Naira Hudson County, you know, fought to lower the voting age in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, we worked on a bill in uh, 2018 uh, in Congress to lower the voting age nationally. And uh, amazingly, it uh, last year came up for a vote in the House of Representatives, the first time ever that. Uh, Congress voted on lowering the voting age below 18, and you know, we got got 100 some. I don't I don't even remember the vote count, but it was a, a really significant number of people voted for uh, lowering the voting age, which is just incredible. And uh, just it was like a, most of the House Democrats I know, and you'd think even a, a handful of the Republicans. One Republican, I think. One Republican one. in from Texas, maybe. I got I can't remember the name. Yeah, I think he was from Texas. 
And a majority of the Democrats did, yeah. I'm kind of annoyed because my congressman was one of the Democrats who voted no, and I kind of uh, didn't know about this ahead of time, or I absolutely would have been like going at him about this. I know, right? Can we, can we wrap up soon? It's 12 of six. Oh, sorry, Margin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the last slide. Okay. Um, just uh, some uh, pictures from um, uh, annual meetings of the past. Um, you know, we're at a annual, this is what we call the annual conference. Um, now it's uh, yeah. You know, conference was annual meeting. Um, so there's a picture there of our 10th anniversary um, with with Chip and oh, Chip. Eric. Uh, I think Eric's here today in the in the the meeting. Um, some other folks, uh, Pam and Jason and yeah. everybody. And then uh, right. that's the 2010 this. meeting on the upper right, and then the 2011 meeting on the bottom right. Um, the only one of these that I made it to. Yeah, Which you came to 2012, and I'm grateful to you for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in a constant state of panic attack leading up to that, to that one. Mm. <laughs> I, had to, I had to plan that one. <laughs> uh, another story. All right. Well, um, thank you, everybody, for uh, sticking around for this uh, this uh, conference or yeah. this uh, meeting, and uh, definitely looking forward to all of the uh, the great um, conferences, uh, you know, sessions to come. Yes. And hey, we're, we're around online. You want to know more hot Naira history, you know. <laughs> Feel free to ask. Yep.